Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Becoming the Brand. My name is Mohit Ayat, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking with Rachel Lee, a brand strategist that has a wealth of knowledge and information about brand strategy and how to grow your business using your brand and using the marketing tools that we have available to us and the ways that you can present yourself in order for your audience to recognize you and do business with you. Let's dive right in and talk to Rachel. So, Rachel, welcome to Becoming the Brand, and thank you for joining us on today's episode. Um, please tell us a little bit about how you created your company, how you got into the brand strategy world. Well, thank you for having me. It's an interesting story because I never intended to start a business. I'm, I'm an art kid. I uh, have a background in design, and I all I dreamed about growing up was I want to make things for a living. And I thought that me being in my full-time job as a graphic designer at some marketing company would make me happy. And I didn't anticipate that my dream job would not tick off all of the boxes for me. So me starting out my business was actually just an act of exploration for me in the beginning, where I decided to take on freelance projects to see what actually excited me, what lit me up. And I wanted to work on different types of creative projects with different types of clients, different industries. I wanted to explore. And that sort of what started my journey unknowingly into the world of business, because part-time freelancing turned into full-time freelancing. And I didn't I'd say that I wasn't equipped to handle the business side of things. I was the creative going in. And the entire vision that I had for my business was I want to create a situation where I get to do what I love for a living sustainably and have full control over my schedule and the way that I do things. And that sort of led me into the first year of business where I did a lot of exploration and that's how I came into the world of branding. And that's how I fell in love with it. So. You'd imagine me as the design kid. I initially fell in love with branding because it's the only thing a designer can create that will last forever. Yep. Everything else, as you know, in the world of marketing is consumable. Packaging, social media content, any sort of print material, everything is designed with a lot of love and care. You use it for like an hour or a post for 24 hours, and then you chuck it. It's gone. It's consumed. And there's something about that that didn't sit well with me. So what initially got me to fall in love with branding was, of course, the pretty side of things. I'm, I love the, the pretty side of everything. And it was because when you design a brand, it's intended to last for a very long time. It's something that even if it changes, it grows. You build on top of it. And it's something that has the potential to impact a lot more people. So I, I really liked that. And that was sort of the gateway into me doing branding. That was 2019 pre-pandemic. And we know a lot of things happened in between then where I, as, as I continue to just help small businesses with the way they visually presented themselves, I learned more about business. And I came to understand that branding is not just about the way things look. I think. A lot of people focus on that because that's all they see. But it's like the iceberg, right? Like you yeah. need to. There's a lot of stuff underneath um, that people don't understand or recognize. And over time, as I became more familiar with business, I came to understand that branding is about identity. And when we even say that word, you understand it's like an onion. There's a lot of layers that yep, you can absolutely. peel back. And that was sort of my entry point into me becoming interested in the bigger picture of branding. And the more that I did this, and I'll get to the part where um, I sort of segued from the world of business branding into personal branding, which is what I do today. And it, I feel like it all starts with some realization you have for yourself deep down inside. And that realization came for myself when I realized that I wasn't happy with the way I was presenting my own brand to the world. I had a business brand. I feel like most of us start like that. Yeah. I think the, the name of my first company was Toucan Design Studio. Big agency, pretty logo, nice graphics. You had no idea I was behind it. Couldn't <laughs> see my face. I was a ghost on the internet. And I thought that was the way to go. But as I built my business, I came to this point where I was 
realizing I was lacking the connection that I really wanted to have with my customers. Business is, it feels very impersonal when people interact with a company, yep. an agency. Um, you don't have that sense of connection. And I, and for the per type of person that I am, I'm very relational. Like I go crazy if I don't have that people to people interaction when it's just me pushing pixels behind a computer. That's not, that's exactly the same thing as me doing my full-time job. I wanted the human interaction of it. And the way that I had built my business and my brand removed the ability for me to connect with my audience and with my customers that way. So I realized that I needed to make a change and that sort of when I decided it's a big decision to switch to a personal brand and allow people to see me as the human behind the business for the first time. And it sounds simple in today's day and age where there's social media, but there was this weird mindset shift that had to happen where I have to be okay with people seeing everything. And like the good and the bad, because humans are messy. Like I'm, I'm not gonna say, like we, I, I know with personal branding, like there's this idea that we present ourselves a certain way, you know, packaged, polished, like a, a, everything's like on point. But there is a messy human side of it that I had to deal with myself and answer those questions of how do I want people to see me online? And the process of answering that um, showed me that there's a lot of boundaries that you have to set clear lines between what's personal and what's business. Um, and how do you show up in a way that feels good for you, but also gets results for your business? Like that's really yeah. hard. And as I figured that out for myself, I became interested in helping other people with the same thing because now more than ever, there's a lot of solopreneurs out there, a lot yeah. of one man bands who are, I mean, doing an amazing job, but struggling with the way that they're presenting themselves. They either sacrifice their soul and just show up as like suit and tie business all the way. Um, and then feeling com a complete disconnect with their online persona and the way, are, yeah. the way they are in real life, or they just stay everything personal and they don't show up at all, and their business ends up lacking visibility. So I, I saw a lot of that. I, yeah, I, I think, you know, to your point, I mean, and first of all, that was like so much golden information <laughs> and, you know, so much clarity you. on that. <laughs> and thank you so much for, for diving so deep into how you became to where you are now. Um, sometimes it's hard because a lot of people don't know how to articulate you know, their story or how to talk about themselves. Yeah. Um, usually they get somebody else to talk about them, it's much easier. Yeah. But I think, like you, you mentioned, you when you transitioned from the creative person that you were into the business and entrepreneur and combining the creativity along with that, I, yeah. I think a lot of us go through that same struggle. A lot of businesses, they start off with this amazing idea that I'm gonna start doing this. I wanna have my own business, which has happened, yeah. you know, more in the past few years, I would say, more entrepreneurs and business owners or people that have decided that I want to start my own business. Mm. And by starting that, it's great. You have everything ready to go. But then when it comes down to the business side, a lot of us lack some of the tools that is required. And we're trying to compete with large corporations that have been around for many years that have multiple departments that can do different jobs. So whether from the accounts department to the creative side, to the business side, to acquisitions, financials, all these areas in those companies, there's different departments with multiple people within those departments doing those jobs. Yeah. Now you are trying to get to their level with one person and hoping to do it all with not a lot of money invested into it, because yeah. most likely either you invested into a shop that you built or the the beginning stages of you know everything that you needed to get started. So you're you're lacking funds to be able to take that forward, uh, and you don't have enough credibility for you to get funding enough for you to also allow you to spend it the way they have. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a catch twenty two situation. So yeah. I, I can see how that, that changes. And, and you have to essentially, I think the great thing is with podcasts that are out these days, you know, mm -hmm. um, more and more entrepreneurs are able to learn on the go and start to get themselves, themselves up to speed mm -hmm. uh, from audiobooks to actual books about how to grow your business and how to do different things within your business. I think yeah. that allows the individual to become uh, more... Uh, more involved in the business in all aspects. 
and understand that it's not just about the, the creative idea that I have or the one product cool idea that I have. It's about everything else that comes along with it that I can that can support me in getting my vision out to the world to be able to get it out. And mm. I'm sure you work with companies from different levels that are in different stages of this. Um, yeah. How do you, at which point do you kind of get get to a point where you say, you know what, we're at a certain stage, we need to kind of take a step back or let's move forward because you should be ahead by now. Do you ever get to that situation with any clients at all? Yeah, I mean, I I love having the conversation with my clients about um, what happens when they get to a crossroads. I feel like we all do that. Um, yeah. I did that, you have that, when we get to that point in our business. And I like to say it's like growing pains, yeah. where you grow to a certain size and then the jacket you have doesn't quite fit anymore. And that's where we have the conversation around um, first and foremost, what direction are they growing in? Because, you know, like we all start with a vision, but that vision also changes. As you move and maneuver, you might realize the original vision you have, it's it sort of evolves. And when you get to a certain point, especially just from a branding perspective, there's uh, basically two choices that you have where um, you sort of stack on top of what you had already, sort of like an upgrade. This is sort of like a rebrand cycle. Yeah. Um, I find that it's very common where businesses, they get to this point somewhere around the three to five year range after they've done their experimenting, throwing spaghetti against the wall, making sure their business is viable. Then they get to this point where they're like, okay, it's stable, but the way that I'm packaging myself is not a good representation of where I want to go moving forward. And in order to level things up, to attract the talent that I need for my company, in order to um, have customers perceive us a certain way and to continue to buy into our brand, we need to repackage that. So that's sort of like um, one of the options where we just sort of tack on top of what they have and sort of polish it out. And then there's the other thing where basically what I did was a complete turnaround where it's like, okay, I think that what we have is great but we need to completely change the way that people perceive us. There's yeah. something about the direction we've been going in that's not a good fit anymore. So for me, that was a switch from a business brand to a personal brand, and that's really big and can be very jarring, but sometimes that also is the right answer because what people have been doing, maybe it hasn't been working very well for them. Yeah. Like um, one of the friends that I have has a PR company, goes underneath a business brand, and um, maybe it worked really well for the first few years that they were in business, but then they very quickly realized that it was lacking that sense of connection that they needed with their customers, and yep. no amount of tacking on to the business brand was going to create that experience. So now they're faced with um, a very tough decision to switch into a personal brand. It's still them, like they're, they've always been the face of their company, right. but to make that decision um, involves a complete change in your marketing strategy. It um, involves a lot of mindset shifting for yourself because suddenly you're at the forefront and the spotlight of your interactions with your customers. So um, that's just an example. Yeah. But uh, yeah, every company goes through change and it's necessary in order for your company to keep growing to for your brand to continue to evolve as in the way that you package it. Yeah, yeah I think and even with, uh, with logic companies uh, with many years of being in business, they also go through a rebranding you know, cycle as well every, mm -hmm. I don't know, 10, 20 years or so. I mean, bigger brands like Pepsi or Coca-Cola, they, they've gone, you know, I mean, Coca-Cola pretty much has kept the same branding, but I remember yeah. at one point it was Coke was used more uh, as a mm -hmm. as their marketing strategy on and commercials, TV commercials, more versus Coca-Cola, and they had different feelings. So I think moving on to other companies that are trying to change that, it's it's a good thing. because, And like you said, there's, there's a time that you must get to a point where you realize, well, can I increase my sales by rebranding myself, investing in changing and changing the mindset and shifting the mindset of the internal team and allowing it to then go out to the world and say, hey, from now on, we're going to be talking about mm. this type of stuff and this is how our conversations are going to go from now on and this is how we're going to connect and these are the clients we're now going to acquire and adjust our clientele list. So yeah. that that whole rebranding, like you said, doesn't isn't just across your marketing but also across the rest of the rest of the departments within your company that needs to adjust to align with what story you're telling. Right? Exactly. Uh, which actually takes me on to the story side of things. We talked about earlier about how story 
is is something that can that compels you more versus you know just you know consuming and, and getting rid of it. So yeah. I, I know in my world of video production, storytelling is key, and mm -hmm. for me to uh, help my clients express themselves to their audience, I always say, well, let's start with a brand story video, mm -hmm. which allows us to, you know, share your story with your audience so they can get to know you yeah. and connect with you. And then you start introducing your products and services and the people behind and your customers and, and so on. And we, it goes forward. How do you feel, you know, I'm sure you understand that's the value of storytelling, but mm -hmm. has it does it really make that big of a difference, or do you feel like it? You know, storytelling is something that people just say, "I'm a storyteller. I want to tell my story." What do you think? I, I know it's one of those things that people For are questioning sure. every time you say, "You need to tell your stories." Like, I don't have a story to tell. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, believe it or not, your brand is your story, and whenever people come to me and they're like, Rachel, I need your help with my brand. And I'm like, okay, well, tell me tell me about it. What's your vision? What are you trying to create? What is your story? And they're like, I don't know. I'm just here to sell my products. And I have to be honest. I'm like, I'm sorry, then you don't have a brand. I can't help you. I'm not here to fabricate something for you that doesn't exist. And at the core of every brand is a story because it goes down to the psychology of the way people think and the way the reason why people buy. People connect with people. And the whole point of having a brand is to turn an entity like a company, something that's completely impersonal. I like to think of companies as multi-celled organisms. We're multi-celled <laughs> organisms, right? Like we have many different cells yep. that have to function together, but we move as one unit. You just see me, but I'm made up of many different parts. And the idea of a brand Brand is to package a company as a person, like a person, like a sort of like a persona, so that customers they develop that sense of attachment with that company the same way that a person would interact with a human. And yeah. the relationship that they have is dependent on, of course, the type of person, the persona that your brand has. So is it like a peer-to-peer -peer relationship? Is it like a coach-to-mentee relationship? Is it like a parent-to-child relationship? And I can go down the gutter with that. But the idea is um, that brands are built to simulate that connection that humans have with each other. So going back to your point about storytelling, it is important because the whole point of having a relationship is you know who it is that you're talking to. And without story, there is no context, right? It's Very true. It's like yeah. watching a movie or reading a book. Like I literally just finished binge through, uh, binging through the TV series Breaking Bad. And it, it, of course, it's an just amazing now? show. Just now. Just I know. Now. I am so late to <laughs> the okay. game. It's okay. You're just a little bit I like cried my eyes okay. out with the ending. <laughs> um, I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't watched it. But the, the point being is that without the backstory of these characters, it's like drinking flat Coke. Like, it's yeah. just like, oh, there's a bad guy, but why is he bad? I don't know, but it, it matters. Like, yeah. you want to emotionally invest. And in order to emotionally invest, you need to know everything that goes on behind the person, the thing that you see today. So, yeah. yes, story, stories really do yeah. matter. Well, I, I, to, to add to, to your point, I think uh, story matters not just because you're trying to attract that direct audience mm -hmm. or that customer to your brand, but once you, they are um, committed to your story, once they're invested in your story, then they start selling your story to others yeah. that you haven't even connected to or you haven't reached out to. Um, and that expands your, your network of uh, essentially promoters in a way. They're naturally promoting your brand. You know, mm -hmm. major companies have that, but uh, getting back to Breaking Bad, and I you know, I know we kind of are kind of talking about that, but <laughs> I remember when, when it first came out, yeah. uh, it was like three seasons in, I wasn't really into this. Yeah. And one of my friends said, you know, you should watch this show. And I said, I don't know, just, you know, a teacher and a student, and it's all just like, I don't know, drug business or something. And he goes, yeah. no, no, it's, it's actually quite interesting. When mm -hmm. he started telling me the story and how, how interesting and, and uh, enjoyable the story is for him. Yeah. It got me hooked a little bit. It's like, oh, really? Let me consider it. And that mm -hmm. allowed me to go back home and start watching it. And I got into it. And, of course, you know, you know, several seasons later, you know, we're all, <laughs> like, you know, hoping for something new to come out. But yeah. um, that, that within itself allowed me to watch a show that I wasn't even considering mm -hmm. or be invested into the Breaking Bad brand that yeah. they created. For me to go into it, all it did took was a friend of mine to tell me the story from his perspective, mm -hmm. who I, you know, believe his perspective and point of view because we had the same interest in in films and movies and and, and everything. Mm -hmm. 
and he knew that I would like that. Yeah. That that is the power of storytelling is where it allows you to share your story with one person and that person then shares your story and multiplies that with many others once they're believers and once they are invested and resonate with your brand and with your story and with your company as a whole, I think. Um, exactly. And I think it is quite quite fun that, you know, that we get to tell these stories yeah. uh, on a daily basis and we get to listen to the stories. Yeah, and we get to create our own. And yeah. I think there's, uh, at least in the world of personal branding, people feel really pigeonholed into telling a story when they're like, there's nothing special about me. That's something I hear a lot. I'm like, no, actually, there is. You just really need to dig. And it's about seeing it from a very specific perspective because every story has a point. Yeah. And when I help my clients with telling their story, it's about helping them figure out how do they want people to see them today. And then we sort of take a look at you know the, the journey that has led them to this point. And we pick the key moments that are relevant to that end goal. It's kind of like shooting at a target. If we know where we're going, we know how to... Uh, paint the picture in such a way where step one, step two, step three, it all sort of makes sense so yeah. that their journey is something that their customers can connect to. At the end of the day, stories are about creating that, oh, me too. Like that, that's literally, that's what it's about because yeah. that's how you build rapport with your customers. When your customers see, oh crap, like they've been through the exact same thing that I'm struggling with right now. They don't just have the expertise. I, and at the end of the day, people don't honestly care about your degrees. Like, unless you're a doctor or a lawyer, like, yes, please be certified. Yeah. <laughs> but like, people care less about your credentials. They, all they really care about is if you understand them and if you can help them. Like, that's all people care about. And yeah. stories do an amazing job at communicating things that your resume wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And essentially, I think your, your resume becomes uh, the trail of service that you've left behind with other clients from testimonials that, that you showcase or from if you're, if you're creating content, you know, with that stuff that's being online and people can see that through your platform, through your website or other social platforms, it, that allows them to understand that this is the value, this is the story of this, this specific company. And I think uh, getting involved personally in, into your, your story, into your company is key. And you talked about earlier how, you know, People need to get to see, know you. Um, they don't really connect with your company. And once they know you, the, the company's you know, understanding and being a part of your company is kind of a natural thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think I've seen more and more corporations getting involved to CEOs or the presidents being on camera or, or coming out or sharing their story mm -hmm. with the world. And like you said, you have to be open to the world, getting to know you about your family, about everything, mm -hmm. you become a bit of a celebrity within our own realm, I think you can say. Yeah, uh, yeah. And there's this huge myth that I'm trying to debunk where you don't have to be an influencer with millions and millions of followers in order to have a personal brand. Yeah. I think that's this huge misconception that holds a lot of people back. They're like, what's the point of me showing my face on camera when I've got like 50 people following me? No one's going to see it. And I, I have to help people reframe that perspective because impact can happen at any scale. And if you impact 100% of those 50 people that are following you, congratulations, you've got a higher success rate than someone who's got hundreds of thousands of followers and a 1% engagement rate. Yeah. Like we, we see this all the time um, on social media. And I really want, I'm, one of the things I'm trying to debunk is this idea that like people don't want to see you because you're small. Like yeah. everyone kind of starts somewhere and everyone's story is worth sharing and everyone's story will connect to someone else on the internet. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, that's one other thing I wanted to add. Yeah, I, I think it's a very important point because a lot of people feel that, you know, well, you know, I don't want to invest in doing all this marketing strategies if I don't have a big audience to, to cater to. Yeah. Um, but like you said, if you can convert those 50 or 100, you know, followers into actual customers, and you can sell them 100 products or services or whatever you do, that could you know, be a good start to getting you rolling into the flow of where you need to get going. Yeah. And I think more and more we're getting away from you know, how many social media followers I have. I think those things are kind of starting to, to fade away, especially with businesses. Maybe with other influencers, mm -hmm. it is a key in certain ways. But for the most part, for your own brand, you just need to be able to showcase everything that you do throughout your social platforms so your story is consistent and it has to be consistent on a mm -hmm. regular basis. It can't be periodic or whenever you feel like posting it yeah. because the world will think you're out of business or maybe you're not you know, doing as much business as you 
you know, show off to, to be doing. Yeah, right? yeah, and, and that's one of the challenges for personal branding where sometimes it is hard to stay consistent, where even for me, I'm, I'm an introvert and I get seriously fatigued when I'm in front of the camera a lot, when I'm going out to networking events and always being like open to having people see you, that in itself is tiring. Like imagine having a camera being pointed at you 24 seven, mm -hmm. you feel like you're under scrutiny and it's hard to be yourself. So I always like to tell my clients that it's important to create a bit of separation. And one good thing that people can actually try because we're so close to ourselves, sometimes we blur those boundaries for ourselves. Like who am I actually, right? Like is the person in front of the camera me or am I just putting up a face and when I'm off the camera, I just collapse and I mope around. Um, I like to tell my clients, one thing that you can do is to uh, imagine yourself as like, um, like a video game character. And if um, like, you know, when you play video games, you get to create your own character, you get to choose their outfit, choose their superpowers, their perks and stuff. Um, and then you use that as your persona to create a little bit of separation, because sometimes we can just get way too close and in our own heads about it. Yep. And when you create a bit of that separation, it helps you show up a little bit easier. It helps you uh, protect your energy um, yeah. from constantly being drained by um, all the expectations that people have on you. And you could be like, every time I show up, like I'm stepping into the shoes of this character that I create. Um, and it's still me, but this is like super me, right? Yeah. And and that helps you um, show up at your best while still preserving that sense of privacy that you might need for yourself. It's like, okay, if you've got all of your own stuff, sort it out behind the camera, but once you are okay, show up as that super version of you. So yeah. that that's another thing, a lot of mindset stuff yeah. when it comes to personal branding. Less, it's identity and strategy sort of kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, I, I think that, that is uh, that's exactly what I thought would be the best way to to perceive it because yeah. you're right. We can get really invested into this character that we're trying to get into, which is ourselves. Mm. Um, and what it is easier if you imagine acting or you know when we were kids, you know we also always, always you know pretend you know that we're a certain character and mm. really be invested in really performing that that character if we're playing you know whatever the game we're playing with our friends. Yeah. And I think as we grow older. If your business tells a specific story of how things are going, and it is in relevance to your existing real story, mm. you can maybe create a different personality uh, for it. I mean, there are people that are very professional when they're at the office. Yeah. And then over the weekend, they're crazy. Woohoo! Right? Like Harold <laughs> yeah. and Kumar sort yeah. of thing, right? So it's one of those things where a lot of times who you are in, in front of people Mm. is not exactly always who you want to put out. Even before social media existed, even before you had to do all this, yeah. we were always trying to present ourselves in a certain way mm. to, to look good in front of people, to look professional, to yeah. look like we're larger than life. But then mm. in our own home and with our friends, we would be like, oh, thank God, I can just be myself. <laughs> but you were okay with that. You could yeah. do that on the weekends because you're going out and you're performing mm. and you're, you're enjoying that performance. It's not something that you have to do it. I think people mistake that by saying, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to fake mm. myself. I don't think there's much faking involved in it. Yeah, It's more you're trying to uh, allow yourselves to be a different character that mm. for, for that time period and yeah. not necessarily being off track, but more mm. letting yourself go and n being okay with your flaws. You know, yeah. if you have, you're having a bad hair there or, you know, you, mm. something doesn't look that great in that shot, but what you're talking about in that video that you created is really important and it's effective and informative, then you want to put that out and not worry about the fact that your shirt was off by a little bit. If yeah. you worry about the details, you'll miss out the main picture mm -hmm. and the main information that you're trying to get out in the world. And yeah. that is the stuff that you know, because if you're passionate about your business and you're passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it is easy for you to talk about it. You know, you and I can sit here for hours talking about marketing. Yeah. I can, you know, <laughs> I, and we can keep going. Yeah. But we, we know that you know, there's, there's so much that we can discuss this and then we want to turn it off and reflect back on it. How did I present myself? How did I do? Mm -hmm. How can I do it better tomorrow? Yeah. Right? And we have to reevaluate ourselves to make sure that we do that. We don't have, if you have your own business, you don't really necessarily have a boss that tells you, you did a great job today, or you did a bad job. <laughs> yeah. You have to evaluate, you know, how was your performance mm -hmm. today? Have yeah. I 
have I gotten the best out of myself today mm -hmm. and was able to connect with the right people that I wanted to do? Is yeah. my business perce uh, proceeding in the direction that I want? Yeah. And am I, am I happy with this? If you are, you're going to get up in the morning and do it all over again. If you're not, you're going to start to feel down and it's going to take you in that direction where you don't want to go, mm. where eventually you have to just turn off everything and pe tell people, hey, it didn't work out. But, but it, I think the power is all within us. Mm. We just have to allow ourselves to follow our, our vision in terms of what we are really passionate about. And mm. like you said, if you really have value, if you really value what you're presenting and what you're selling, yeah. then it's easy for you. But if you're just trying to sell just because you want to sell and make money, it's hard for all of us to try to kind of get that out of them because they're not really invested in it. Yeah, Right. exactly. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I can talk for hours and I know our, our time is uh, slowly coming to an end and um, I would love to hear more. Now, if you can share with us, you know, where where can somebody get a hold of you you know if they want to have a conversation and they want to get to know a little bit more about you know what brand strategy looks like for them and their brand uh, and how can you help them you know tell us a little bit about that absolutely well i as as a creative i hang out mostly on instagram it's it's my uh, platform of preference but if you do want to find me i'm also on facebook and linkedin um i'll make sure that my links are available in the uh, show note descriptions but my handle is rachel t y lee you could find me across all of the platforms i currently mostly work one on one with my clients i know that it's uh i've i've had a lot of pushback from people who say that from a creative standpoint that's not scalable and i it, it took me a while to get to that understanding for myself that I want to keep it this way, where I enjoy having a close relationship with my clients. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. And I work very intimately with my clients one-on-one -on, -one on figuring out their brand strategy. And we have conversations very much like these where yeah. I get to ask you, how do you want people to see you? And it can get personal. It kind of has to be if we're figuring yeah. out your personal brand um, and helping people work through the nuances of how they want to present themselves, what feels comfortable for them, what's something they want to see that they haven't quite grown into yet and help them work through the strategy of, all right, how do we construct this? What are the tangible pieces we need to set up? What platforms do you need to be on based on the audience you're trying to reach? You know, all of the, um, the marketing strategy side of things, yeah. uh, but also making sure that we're doing this in alignment with the way that they see themselves. And that's sort of the part where it's it's really fun. I, I enjoy having these conversations. Yeah. Um, but once we sort of have the roadmap of, here's how you want to be seen, here are the things we need to set up to really make that happen, then I my uh, designer side kicks in and I have the ability to go hands in and help people create the visuals for their branding to help them get their website set up, figuring out how do you uh, show up on social media. So all of those things I help my clients with as well. Um, but we always start with a conversation about how do you want people to see you? And then we take everything from there. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think yeah. it, it, it's important for, you know, even with myself, I get involved with my clients, you know, mm -hmm. and I know the the business strategy is you have to build a, a viable business that can survive without you. And yeah. and it for the most part, you know, I think myself, I'm going in that direction of allowing, you know, the right having the right team to be able to do different parts of the job mm -hmm. instead of me being involved in every aspect. But it is important for me to connect with the audience and asking that question of what is the purpose, what is the message, what are we trying to do with this content that we're trying to create for you? Yeah. And by having that first initial conversation, it allows me to better understand where they're going and their values and to see if I really want this client and if I want to be investing my time and creativity mm -hmm. for someone like this. Because if they're not invested in their own stuff, it's hard for me to be invested in it. You know, if you don't believe in, in, in the product, you can't sell it. As a, as a salesperson, as somebody who's marketing it, as somebody who's, who wants to get the, the juice out of it. Mm -hmm. Our job is to listen to their overall story and then take the best part and take the essence of that and then express that to the world in the best way possible, right? And yeah. if they're not on board with us, mm -hmm. it's hard because it's, you know, it's, it's not a one-way street. We're not here to, we don't know enough about their business for us to just come up with things, all right? Um, yeah. So it, d it doesn't work that way, but I'm I'm glad that you're involved in that, and I think that's important. Mm -hmm. you know, and of course, we're not going to stay this way. You're not going to be 
we, when we talk about this probably in five years, it'll be different. It'll Maybe be different. tomorrow it'll be different. Exactly. <laughs> so we don't have to, just because things are going a certain way, mm. it doesn't mean that tomorrow they'll be the same. Like exactly like you said, Absolutely. tomorrow is a whole different day. And, but take today to the fullest and provide the best service that you can to mm -hmm. your clients so they can succeed. I mean, in, in our service world, that's what a service environment does. Yeah. We are there to support and guide our audience or mm -hmm. our customers to reaching their audience and being able to be successful. That to us is success. And yeah. when they pay us, it's even better. Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so how can we reach you? Oh, sorry. There's one more thing that I wanted to actually talk about. Yeah. Your podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was listening to it, uh, your latest uh, episode, I think episode 21. Yeah. <laughs> and I was listening to it uh, this morning and I, it was really nice, very informative, to the point, um, and I enjoyed listening to it, and it gave me some some good insights and, and information about about your brand and your strategy and how to present yourself. Kind of some of the things we talked about today. Thank you. Um, where where would they go to to find your podcast? Because I think it is important for people to to check out your podcast and to be able to to tune in and listen to it and and, and get some insights. Absolutely. So my podcast is called Off Brand, off with a dash and then brand. And it's available on most of the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I think it's on Amazon Music now at this nice. point, I think. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I could also include a link as well um, in the show notes to make sure that people can find it if they can't search it up. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I want people to check that out because I think it's important, you know, for I think the, the marketing and the, the creative community if we don't support each other and don't mm -hmm. help ourselves, each other get you know get out there, we won't be able to reach the lo the people that need our support and help. So mm -hmm. I think that's important for for us to be able to kind of share that and get that out. And I wanted our audience to to know about that just because I, I was listening to it and I thought it was very informative. And I follow it by the way oh, uh, on Apple. <laughs> uh, so I I hope uh, to to listen to more and and get more uh, more information from you. Well, thank you for tuning in. It's uh, it, it was a fun experiment for me to start the podcast, and I I'm just celebrating the fact that I made it past the 20 episode milestone, and many more to come. Nice, nice. Looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, Rachel, you. thank you so much for joining us uh, today here on Becoming the Brand, and the conversation was phenomenal. I think our audience will gain some really amazing insights from from this conversation, and I hope you know to take that and be able to help themselves and help their business grow. Well, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on today's episode. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on all the platforms that you listen to your podcast. And we'll see you next time.